Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Enough with the pleasantries. So, Ultramax and gold are out of stock. What do you do? Where do you go? Who do you turn to? Well, I've got five options to help you out this summer for cheaper alternatives uh, or more available alternatives for when you can't find your favorite color films. Before we get into this, please let me know your favorite color, like affordable color film suggestion is below uh, for other people. And maybe it's, I haven't included it on this list. Uh, so let me know if you have a suggestion below on where to find affordable color films. And they're not actually like specific brands. Um, it's more like types of film. Okay, so the first kind of film I have for you guys is expired film. Now, expired film you can't always find as cheap as you used to be able to these days. I mean, I've managed to find color film like I'm doing for the Frugal Film Project, um, Fujifilm Superior Extra, on eBay for three fifty a roll. And some of those rolls did, it was like a big job law order, and some of those rolls were 24 exposures, some of them were 36. Uh, so the 24, ex I mean, but it was still a good deal regardless. Those kind of things you can still find some on eBay, but it's less and less because I think people are realizing how much money can be made from selling even expired films these days, uh, which is kind of sad, but <laughs> that's the market. That's the free market. So Analog Wonderland actually sells an expired film. They sell Lucky Brand 100 color, I believe. And they do sell, they sell it for eight pounds at the moment. But the thing about this one is that it is only 12 exposures. So while it is definitely cheaper than the fresher films that are out there, it has less. So just take that into account. But it uh, might be interesting to shoot. Spire film is always interesting to shoot because you get, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's not predictable. Some films have been stored really well and then some films have not been stored as well. Uh, so you could have really good luck like what I've had with the Fujifilm Superior Extra where I think it was stored really well. It was only recently expired in 2021. But I have also shot some film that I got from a neighbor uh, so, and it was like expired in 1996 or 2000s and it was Fuji G or Super G plus or one of those things 200 uh, and that does not come out that great it is grainy as all get out um so I only use that film now for more if I'm feeling a little bit more experimental or adventurous or whatever but not when I want like predictable results the last place that I'll recommend for getting expired film. You might have already heard about it. It's the NARC store. So N-A-R-C. And this is run by Nuno, who is from Portugal. And he has been doing this for a long time. I've bought a few films from him. Um, they weren't like, they were very expired. Uh, so they were definitely very grainy and color shifts. Um, but he has loads of different kinds of expired films. And there's actually a really good interview with him on YouTube that came out recently that I highly recommend checking it out. He talks about how he got into it, his whole process. The only thing is he is still, the prices are kind of creeping up. And I think maybe he's realizing that he can get a little bit more for it. Um, so definitely the cheapest place to try and find expired film is trying to find a sell an occasional deal on eBay. Um, but those are three places where you can check it out if you're looking for somewhere to go. Um, there is Expired Film Club as well that is super popular and the guy that runs it is really, really cool and he does loads of like really cool TikToks. I follow him on TikTok. Um, but I think that the prices are a little bit higher there. If you're looking for like actually really affordable film, just check it out, but it might be the same price as like a cheap fresh color film. So that is the first one, expired film. The next uh, budget color film type are ECN2 films. Now, this is probably one of my favorite ways to get affordable color film these days and fresh affordable color film, so not expired film. Uh, so you can get them from a few different places. I've got some from Atlanta Film Co, which is awesome. It's run by Bill Manning, who is from Studio C41, and he works a lot with Dunwoody Photo. Uh, Bill's really great. He's just such a great community member. And then there's also Reflex Lab as well, which I've done a video on recently or I'm gonna do one I'm not really sure what order I'm gonna put these out because I'm kind of all doing them at the same time uh, but yeah so reflex lab they sell 250d and 500t and Atlanta Film Co sells 
various different ones. They've got pretty much the same thing. It's pretty much all the same thing. So it's taking Kodak motion picture film and respooling it into the 35 millimeter uh, canisters, but not removing the rem jet. So the rem jet is still on, which means that you need to get it processed in ECN2 chemistry. Because if you send this to a lab, and they don't know that it's not C41 and they try and put it in their C41 processor, it will ruin the machine because that Remtet layer will just get, it's gunky and dark. And I've actually processed it myself um, at home once and it just, it actually ruined my reels. So it got them all like dark and sticky and I still haven't been able to clean them like fully. Uh, so if you get ECN2 films, just make sure that you get them processed in the ECN2 chemistry or you process it yourself at home and you remove the REM jet before you then process it in C41 chemistry. Now you could also get an ECN2 chemistry kit for home processing as well. So that is definitely an awesome option. I think it's one of my favorites that I'm gonna share with you in this video. And Reflex Lab has really cheap international shipping. So, okay, if you're in the US, Atlanta Film Co. is definitely like a go-to place. Uh, I have a video all about the Atlanta Film Co's 250D, uh, and I will put these up here. So I've got one on Atlanta Film Co's 250D, I've got one on Reflex Labs 250D, and then I have one, I'm, I'm going to shoot the Reflex Lab 500T that's coming out, uh, and yeah, so I, I just love it. I'm just so in love with these films, and I love the whole RevJet thing, so yeah, I think it's awesome. <laughs> the only thing about the ECN2 films is that sometimes the chemistry, uh, it, it's harder to find EC, it's harder to find labs that process ECN2 film at a reasonable cost. Sometimes they're really expensive or they don't do it. There's not as many labs that do it. Uh, so that can be a struggle if you're somewhere that doesn't have a lab that processes ECN2, but I have a solution for that. So, uh, Carmen C2 Film Lab accepts mail-in orders internationally and they will ship your film back to you wherever you are. Uh, now it is expensive so I paid about 20 pounds to ship my negatives back from Spain to the UK so that is really expensive and you're gonna have to factor that into your developing costs. At least they do it and it's available so just think about that. Now you can get ECN2 kits at home and that will definitely be more affordable and it just depends on how much you shoot it and if it's worth the investment, the upfront um, investment of like a home developing kit and stuff. So that is my spiel on ECN2 films. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Number three in this list, the third type of film that is a budget, you can get budget friendly, are actually 24 exposure rolls. Now, this isn't like a this isn't like a true budget type because you are paying less, but you're getting less as well. Uh, but if you're okay with having less exposures and that might save you a little bit of money is to just shoot less, get the 24 exposure rolls as opposed to the 36 exposure rolls, which will be um, normal price, then that is definitely a good option to check out. So I know that the Kodak films um, come in 24 exposure rolls. There are other companies that are selling 24 exposure rolls as well, and this includes Candido Collective. So Candido Collective is relatively new. Their tagline is what is it? Buy films? No, buy flights, not films. Their films are cheaper, but the reason why they're cheaper uh, is because they're 24 exposures. So if you are looking to save money that way, then it is that's a good option. The last way that I have for you to save money on color films this summer is to buy in multi-packs. So like, for example, Lomography has a three pack in all of their color films. Uh, double film, you can buy two packs or five packs on their color films and save a pound for each roll of film. So trying to find multi-packs can definitely save you money on the individual rolls of film um, and you just have to make sure that you want to shoot more than one. <laughs> Which if you're really into film photography or if you're interested in film photography then getting a multi-pack is not a bad idea because then you've got a few rolls to play around with. But yeah, so multi-packs I would definitely recommend looking into and see if you, you can get a good deal on them. If you have any thoughts so far um, what I've mentioned please let me know in the comments below.